Hello, everybody. We're going to do a little tour of the Atari. Oh, there's Tanya. <laughs> We're going to do a little tour of the Atari Age store right now. Um, we can't really see what we're filming there, but I can see when I'm centered. Hello, everyone. Uh, we're at live from PRG 2023. You're watching Zero Page Homebrew. Uh, I've got the chat. Let's see. Woo! Can anybody see me? The not ready for Zero Page Homebrew players, lol. Those machines connected to LCD screens are probably the 2600 consoles. Yes, they are the 2600 plus consoles and the VCS. I'm gonna give the, we're gonna go portable here. So you can carry that one hand. Can you move that stuff? Yeah. Put it in behind, over there. Hello. Hello. Would you be able to put this in behind here? Yep. April or David, there. thank you so much. Hello, taking care of business. Okay, let's start. Um, let's start in this. We're just gonna do a walking tour of all the games at the Atari Age booth. And we've got some brand new games. Berry Fun, Bot and Tom, Karamuho. I believe there's 21 total games being released at PRGE at the Atari Age booth. Tanya and I were busy yesterday boxing every single game up. Um, so if you do, if you are in the P at PRG and buy a game, there's a little bit of our DNA, uh, a little bit of our DNA in every box. Uh, you were sealing the boxes. I was sealing all the boxes. I was folding a lot of the boxes too. So yeah. Yeah, a lot of folding, and I, I was the final person who pushed everything into the box. So the the manual, the cartridge. So if your manuals are all squished up, you know who to blame. It's it's absolutely me, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and there's also some demos of uh, some games that are coming up. Here's uh, Frazzled by uh, Dave M. And Space Taxi, which we just played on the show the other day, uh, which was awesome. And I think it's pretty near completion, so I would expect it to be in the Atari age uh, being released next next round. I don't know if he's sticking to like the once a year uh, thing, but uh, maybe it'll be twice a year now. Maybe we'll get some help from Atari. I can see. So that's pretty good because it's fairly centered and it's wide. And word guess we played that. These are all demo games along there. Oh, you can't figure it out? No. Let's see if we can help. I'm clearly stuck. Oh. <laughs> That's a terrible pun. No, oh, but I'm bummed. <laughs> yeah, S. You've got the S, and there's an I and a T. An I, which I got to put with the somewhere. Chat. Yeah. You guys are such good people. Well, thank you, D-Train. Atari Age is a booth about twice the size of last year, and they're right near the entrance again. Last year, they were stuck in the loading dock. Well, near the loading dock, not in the loading dock. So it was a little bit complicated to set up, but this year is smooth sailing for setting up. They had lots of help. Harpy's Curse is released, finally. Beautiful game for the 7800. Here's uh, a 7800 lineup. Millie and Molly. Ooze at the Goo Gaiden, VHZC. Uh, and we continue, I think this is all 7800s along here. Cartesian Chaos, that's, um, is that on demo in development? Yep. Very fun game. Looking forward to that one being released. Keep an eye on the chat, I was just going to say. Just make sure. Uh, are there Atari reps there with Al? Yes, there's a couple of Atari reps. We're going to be talking with the Atari reps tomorrow on the stream. A little bit more, we have a very big surprise on the VCS. You can probably guess, maybe, maybe not. But we have a very big surprise tomorrow when, our, when we stream tomorrow. And we're going to go to the Champ Games booth after this as well, if we have enough battery. Actually, we can plug in there. We'll plug in at the Atari, at uh, Champ Games booth. Uh, Plum Luck just got released. You can see all the posters around here as well. So if you want to do a pan slowly of all the posters along the edge, 
They have so many games released, <laughs> so many games released that it fills up the entire huge booth here for every poster. Uh, Bernie and the Tower of Doom from Lewis Hill. Muddy Funster, Muddy Vision, very fun. RT is finally out for Muddy Vision as well. It's the Muddy Vision Corner <laughs> and EXO. Brand new release. Drone Patrol in development. Steve Englehart, who is here. Actually, a lot of de devs are here. Yeah. Um, not quite as many as last year, but quite a few. And we just saw um, John Champeau talk at a, uh, at a talk here. Um, Death Merchant. Steve Englehart and Ducks a Tucks Away, which we showed on the show. Yeah. I was trying to find some so more Sega light, uh, light phasers here. But we only found one and it was in the box and it was $60 and I didn't want to buy a box as we have no room. So pass that up. Zero other than that. Just one, one light phaser. Uh, oh, I get... Daryl. Hey, Daryl. Daryl 1970. An example of one of the devs that are here. Repping the ZPH shirt. Thank you so much, Daryl. That's awesome. Woo! <laughs> so yeah, going back to the Ducks Away, I was trying to find some um, Sega light phasers. Yeah. Couldn't find any. I didn't see any Atari XE guns either. They're super, super rare. So I might have to buy them online for our four player day because I definitely want to play. Maybe I can just steal those two. They won't miss them. I know one of them's S. Ramirez's gun. <laughs> Steve Ramirez is so maybe not he might miss it um, so we want to play four player ducks away on the four player day then over to um, Rat Trap for the 7800 in development by Daryl Genther there he is <laughs> um, and here's some more uh, Quantum Tunnel um, this is Thomas Yench's game that we played the other day a pas de deux Wonderful. Pas de deux. Yeah. Challenging, but not so challenging that you can't uh, get it done, but it is challenging. It's a pretty awesome game. Very awesome game. And the AWA Anthology, remember, were you on the show when we interviewed um, the three of them about their games that they brought up from... No. I don't think Might so. have been... Well, obviously, it was only so many people. Might have been Darcy or Erilyn. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. Scorch, gorgeous box. Look at that. Oh, my that God. Box. Zoom in on that box. Oh Get in on that box. No DIY version of the XE or Sega light guns. No, I mean you can make them yourself. It's very simple, but I think the hard part is the aligning the uh, optics so that uh, it'll focus the light properly. Otherwise, you just get the whole screen as either on or off. And for the first time ever, Atari Age is now distributing Lynx games which we played on the show the other day, premiered both of these. Odin X, well not premiered, but we premiered Odin Exus, and we played gro the compilation Growing Ties Deluxe. Oh my, I played too much of Odin Exus, I apologize again. Um, but it was too much fun, I just had to keep playing. Um, amazing shooter, Odin Exus, really, really fun. And we move along, and what is this? It's invaded, there's an Intellivision in here. What is this doing here? Akalabath, uh, in development by Oscar Toledo G. Uh, excellent programmer. Um, so Al was very excited about this, a huge fan of the Ultima series. So this is in development, coming out soon. 3D underground fighting, RPG. Um, and Blockum Sockum, we played this on the show the other day. Tanya loves that game. I love puzzle games, I love that game. Fantastic puzzle game, yeah. Very fun puzzle game by John Hancock. He's here. I said uh, hi to him the other day. Um, then we have Zeno, Zeno Wings, Zeno Wings by Lawrence Stavely in development. I can't wait to play this on the show. It is obviously right up my alley. It's a, like a tribute to Galaga. It's Galaga-esque. Um, so I can't wait to play this on the show. I played it here and it is awesome. The graphics are amazing and the background scrolling is really good. Uh, another new release for the Atari Jaguar, Rocket Ranger. 
Um, this is uh, CinemaWare, uh, officially licensed. Uh, really amazing graphics, obviously, if you've played any of the CinemaWare games um, from back in the day. Uh, what's the big one? Uh, slipping my mind right now, but uh, really amazing graphics on the CinemaWare. I played a bunch of my C64. Uh, Atari 800 XL Rules says, I want to pick a, a few of these releases up in box, but couldn't make it there. That sucks. Um, <laughs> next, time. next time. Or they're going to be released in the Atari Age store as well in November. And we're going to be doing Atari Age Day uh, coming up where we're going to be unboxing all of these games, talking to all of the devs live on the show. And then, uh, then they'll be in the stores and you can play them. And you'll get a very good overview of each of the games. More than this, this whirlwind tour of the, of the booth. And Nova Gen as well, we premiered this on the show the other, uh, the other week. Fantastic, yeah. Really fun game. Great uh, first person shooter. Uh, Defender of the Crown, yes, thank you so much Gamma Dev for letting me know that one. That's exactly what I was thinking of. And thank you Ground Trooper for the subscription. Uh, and jumping at shadows, oh, come back here. We'll, we'll, we're almost done. It's the last one. Jumping at Shadows is right at the end. It's the updated demo. It's not finished. It's still in development by Lawrence Stavely. Uh, excellent, excellent game. I should play it uh, before we leave. Maybe later on today. Oh, oh my God. You just missed your... Uh, the, you yeah. got it on camera. Yeah, yeah it says winner of the uh, Atari Homebrew Awards, Fantastic. which we host each year. It's yeah. coming up soon. Oh my God. <laughs> More organization and spreadsheets coming up. Okay. So are these, these are the old games. Yeah, you can start at this end if you want. Um, actually, this is a merged booth of, up a bit. This is a merged booth of Atari Age and Atari. So there are Atari reps here as well with Atari merchandise. Yeah. Um, and you can completely outfit your whole body. <laughs> You've got sweatshirt, sweatpants, workout shorts. And they have Atari Age hats, brand new Atari Age hats. Yeah, let's show the hats off. Really nice hats. So these are brand new. And it says adjustable. Authentic. <laughs> oh, there it is. Atari Age right in the back. And some of these games have these have posters included. I know Atari, uh, RT does, Penalt does. Scorch does, and Karamuho does. So they've included some of the amazing artwork that adorns the front of the box. Uh, speaker hats on closeout, yeah. Adult, uh, half off speaker hats, no, there's no speaker hats here. Um, and there's some uh, Atari um, reissue cartridges of prototypes that, have, that are put out as well here the set uh, let's go over to the new boxes and a Quatari Atari Vox Seagull 78 adapter and there's uh, all the boxes laid out for all the new releases and pretty close pretty wide so those are I think all the 7800 and 2600 games, yes. Not the, uh, not the Jaguar, not the Lynx. Well, actually, the Jaguar and the Lynx are there, but the boxes aren't here right now. Obviously, in November, they'll be there. And as many Atari Age stickers as you can sh shake shove a stick in. at, yeah, as you can shove in. Back. Yeah, when, uh, people know when you order something from Atari Age, you always get a pile of stickers. So. We're, we're starting to wallpaper the house in the Atari Age stickers. Any of the Repro motherboards, e.g. Black Widow? Uh, not that I've seen, no. And of course, uh, all the older games are here. Um, if you wanted to buy some of the older classic Atari Age releases as well. And well, let's go over to the poster here. So you can see all the covers all at once on the poster, all the box arts for all 21 releases. There's the two Lynx games and the two Jaguar games. So, 
There, nice pan up. Tanya's working blind. We have no idea what's on the camera, but nobody's complained. Where's Al? Oh, well, yeah, we'll show off uh, some of the people in a second. Actually, he's over here. Oh yes, okay. So here's some of the older games, but there ones. There's one in particular we're going to take a look at. <laughs> what is this? Pixelated versions of us. Oh my Ooh, goodness. Might be shiny. There's me. There's Tanya. There's Darcy. And there's Erlen. And there's some kitty cats. Yay! Worst selling game in the store. Yeah. <laughs> no, people love the kitties. Uh, Al's right there. So Al's busy talking to some people. Yeah. Subversively point the camera at him. No. So yeah, really nice. It's grainy, but what's to be expected? The shots are good. Okay, that's good. We're just trying to make sure you see things. So just trying to make sure you see things. It's it's very hard to know exactly where I'm pointed. Yeah, and also there's limited bandwidth here, so. Um, so that's that's the whirlwind tour of the uh, booth, really. Yeah. Um, let's see if Daryl has anything to say. Yeah. What game are you playing, Daryl? Oh, Rat Trap. Is it, is it good? It's okay. <laughs> it's okay. For 7800, it's yeah. okay. No, it looks really good. Thanks. Thank you. So it's still in development. What do you have left to do on it? Um, make a cartridge. Really, oh, it's pretty much done. It's pretty much done at this point. Um, it's just a matter of all the fine tuning, the manual, the box, uh, stuff like that. Yeah. Really, yeah. Oh, good. So you're really close. Yeah. Just missed the window. Just missed the window. Yep. Okay. Yep. So next, next round. Maybe now that he Al's got some help, he might be doing twice, two releases a year. Yeah, maybe. I'm just happy to, that it's going to see the light of day. I'm yeah. really happy about it. Yeah, it looks really, really good. <laughs> Hi! I'm on TV! <laughs> yeah. Awesome. I'm glad I got to come, you know, and see something this year yeah. on display. So, um, can control it with the Super Nintendo controller. It's a little easier with the top three buttons. Yes. I think Al's going to dig for a controller later and get it set up, so that'll be a little nice. Yeah, it works really well with that. And I, I, we played it on the show with the, with the yeah. Super Nintendo controller. It's, that's really good. Yeah. Uh, it makes the changing the maze a lot easier. Yes, yeah, it does. Yeah. I kind of, I kind of thought the old red, green, blue, in my head when I did it. So it's kind of, you have the red. If you're holding the right button, it's red, yellow, blue. So if I get that in my head, then I don't. Well, other than that, I don't have a problem. With it. Yeah, exactly. And that's what I had to do when I was playing. Is like, okay, this, this. Welcome back to PRGE Zero Page Homebrews live coverage. Oh, it sounds official. Um, we're at the Champ Games booth now with John Champo, uh, Paul Champo, Nathan Strum, the elusive Nathan Strum is sitting there. Wow. And S. Ramirez as well. Oh my God. The stars are all out tonight. <laughs> and um, yeah, we've got uh, all of uh, Champ Games' new games, two new games, Elevator Agent and Turbo Arcade along with a stack of his older games, classic uh, classic games from Champ Games. We've got Mappy, Wizard of War, Kick, Scramble, Galagon, Robot War. Here's Elevator Action in action. Uh, we were doing some beta testing like the day before we left the sh for the show, uh, testing it out for some of its very exciting new... Uh, 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 Somebody trying to get in the shot. <laughs> Some of its uh, new unannounced um, features that it has, and we'll probably talk with John Champo about some of those new features. Yes, wow, Nathan, exactly. And uh, yeah, it's kind of lunchtime, it looks like. I think they're done lunch, which is good. We don't want to catch them on. And we've got even a, a steering wheel here for Turbo Arcade made by Paul um, and we've got a bunch of their games on display and uh, yeah so um, the two new games that he is coming out which we have shown on the show Elevator Agent which is obviously a port of Elevator Action and Turbo Arcade which is a Turbo 
but an enhanced version of Turbo, closer to the arcade that he worked on, obviously all these with Nathan Strum, which has now 60 frames a second, um, visuals in the background, and it's, it's an absolute feat of magic what they've done with Turbo Arcade, and the frames of animation that they have being compiled on the fly. Um, so wait, John is selling all his games on cart now? Yes, they're all available on cart now. He has been able to pull off the uh, um, unimaginable yet again and has pivoted so now he can sell directly his games on cart from champ.games. Um, yeah, even his back catalog and his new games, he's got the box, the manual, the cartridge, all professionally printed. It looks really, really good. Like all the quality that you've come to expect from Champ Games. Yeah, so, yeah, people were kind of worried about uh, what would happen with it after um, the, the purge. I guess that's what we're calling it. <laughs> what would have happened after the purge, but uh, he, John has emerged victorious and been able to sell his games once again and been able to make it to PRGE as well. So that's very exciting. So um, let's come around this side and take a look at what games. I don't know why these keep getting turned off. <laughs> Somebody comes around and keeps turning off these games. Hey, Steve, how's it going? All right, how are you, you doing, Dave? Pretty good. You've been helping out with uh, Champ Games over here. Yes, I have. I've been working out, uh, helping with the booths since this morning and a little bit last night. So some of the setting up and talking to people about the games and yeah, helping to make a few sales. Excellent, excellent. Test the games. We've got six games laid out that they can play and actually run through and see for themselves. So, And I think that you have been play-tested and beta-tested every single one of these games, if I can make that assumption? Not all, but the majority. Some of the newer ones, I'm newer guessing. For sure, yeah, yeah. yeah. So the majority that we actually, the ones that we had out, I have pretty much play-tested through. So, Because yeah, some of them go back quite a ways. Yeah, they go back before I had met John. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, so he's got this new turbo arcade and elevator action. Those have been the top sellers. Obviously, yeah, but he's, he's also been selling out some of his older games too. He sold out of uh, Scramble and Super, uh, Super Cobra Arcade, yeah. yeah. I mean, those are both amazing, amazing shooters. I love them. Yeah, it, it's, it's just like playing the actual arcade game with the missiles coming at you sideways and the moving tanks, so I, I think it's pretty neat. I think John is free now, so we'll uh, pivot over to him. Thank you, Steve. So we're going to go, um, I'm going to just go right over here. Hey, John. Hey, how's it going? What's up? Pretty good. Uh, uh, so, so 10 copies of Turbo? Yes, I would like to order 10 copies of Turbo for Canadian distribution. Okay. <laughs> Wonderful. We need that uh, distribution center up there. So yeah. it makes it a little bit easier, you know. Is there anyone else in Canada that buys this stuff instead of you? As I think it's me and maybe two people on the East Coast. Okay, I'll give you three then. So. <laughs> Excellent. So this is crazy. You have your own booth. This is awesome. This is our first. Yeah, we decided in uh, July when the news hit that there are two options. One is fold up shop or two, basically drive myself insane. <laughs> so you chose the insane route and went, went and... I also wanted to drive Nathan insane too. So, uh, yeah. so that, that looks like... Bonus, so. And you pulled Steve somehow, Steve Ramirez, into this whole mess? Yeah, yeah. yeah he's, helping, well, he's helping out? Yeah, yeah. He, he puts the mess in, in there, for sure. But, uh, yeah, we, we got him, too, at least. Uh, we poached him from uh, Atari age, so sorry, Al. But, um, Pulling people over yeah, to the dark side. Is the dark side? Yeah, you use the arm chip, right? That's the dark side. Oh, yeah, all our games do not work on the 2600 Plus, in case you're wondering. <laughs> Guaranteed not to work. Yeah, exactly. Get, well, yeah, we actually put stickers on there. Not 2600 Plus compatible. That's hilarious. We actually, I was talking to Al about it, and, you know, obviously they know that the homebrew community is excited, and, you know, very, uh, they would love something like that. So we're willing to certainly work with uh, Atari, Al, whatever, whatever it takes to get our games to work on whatever system they put out. So, Because the people who are playing these games, they don't, they don't care, they don't know, they just want to play the game, so... We just want to have them play it, so it's, it's a good, good uh, you know, balance is what we need, so... And you've got two brand new games debuting here at PRG, what are they? Yep, these are the two big ones. We have uh, Elevator Agent and um, Gore Turbo Arcade, I was going to say Gorf Arcade. But uh, yeah, so um, they've both been in the works, actually Elevator Agent's been in the works for six years now. Yeah. Wow, has it been that long? 
Oh my God. I started it. So that was when I started it for the bus technology. Things went away, you know, um, then um, learned a few things and I was able to basically uh, use the CDFJ driver to uh, get almost exactly what I wanted to get out of, uh, it was more difficult, but it was worth it, so. Yeah, and you're talking a little bit about uh, the kernel for elevator agent at your talk that you just did with Gary Kitchen. And so what are some of the highlights of Elevator Agent? I know we're doing some beta testing, last minute beta testing before you put this out, of what did you add in the over top of the arcade version of Elevator? Yeah, actually um, we added a challenge mode. Oh, we always have our standard stuff where we have the three uh, skill levels. But ever since um, Galagon, we've been adding challenge modes to everything, which is basically the same game. And then we add a bunch of uh, updated, um, um, you know, enemies or whatever it is, or gameplay mode. So actually, Elevator Agent has a few. We took from our Ladybug arcade experience and we added a versus mode. So um, that's what you and Tanya tested. Thank you very much. Um, that's where one player gets to use one of the, uh, uh, control one of the enemy agents and basically chase you around. So I think it's kind of fun. Yeah. It is fun. Yeah, we had we had some fun like switching out. Uh, who's going to play the agent? Uh, play two player versus um, alternating mode. So that way, one you basically take turns being, but you're still both trying to get a high score. So it's kind of cool. And then the second one was the challenge mode that you adapted, which kind of came together at the end. But um, it's kind of cool. You have uh, power ups, like a weapon power up, and you know one that makes you run faster, a bulletproof vest. But also we introduced. Um, I've been watching all the Mission Impossible movies, so uh, um, I we added a double agent. So it basically kind of looks like your agent, but when he comes out, he's basically trying to steal the plans. So he'll go into the uh, red doors, set a bomb, and try to blow up the plants, but you can shoot him, or and he can kick you, and so it's, it's kind of neat. So you have that. Added level of uh, difficulty and complexity. Well, that's awesome. Well, it's that champ game's touch, right? If you play versus mode, you can actually, when he comes out, you can actually control him, and actually, you can try to steal the red, the documents before the other guy, so it's kind of fun. So, so we have that, and um, the game itself has, uh, we put in the arcade, I always loved the arcade, but it only had one building layout. And then the differences in each maze was uh, where the doors were. That was basically it. And then they had some double elevators that they changed. So we basically put in three all new buildings. Um, so it's it keep things fresh and stuff like that. So add a little variety, mix it up a little bit. So yeah, we, we had the extra ROM. That one had to be 64K anyway. So I was like, hey, I got tons of ROM left. We, got this, oh, we almost made it 32, but we had, was like 34. And I went, I can't get. So at this point, let's just go. Is there a randomized level mode or are these uh, extra levels set? They're set, yeah, the randomized would have been, even just making them set because of the, as I touched upon in there, it took me four months to write the, the kernels themselves. So that um, is very specific to what can be, like you can have an elevator on one side and an escalator on the other, or you know, this has to be that color for it to look good. So we meant to, uh, um, it was very specific, so putting an editor would have been a nightmare, so. But it, it works out. Plus, you know, you know, we packed a lot in there for uh, for yeah. what it is, so. Yeah, there's a lot of extras. Yeah. yeah, and those are always fun to play and discover and see how they change the game up as well. Yeah. Like I said, we like to be inspired by the old game, but we're not, we're not going to just be, uh, you know, people can just go play the old game, so why make it? Exactly, or just offer what everyone else is offering, so we say. Yeah, you have to add a little bit to it. Yeah, exactly, so, yeah. And also Turbo Arcade, and, and the highlight, I think, for me, is the amazing amount of detail in the scrolling backgrounds, the, the smoothness of the, what you've been able to squeeze out of the play field. Yeah, Maybe. Amazing. Yeah, this was something that was inspired by the Xevious engine. Nathan and I worked on that um, with uh, Chris. Yeah, Chris Walton did amazing on uh, the scrolling background on uh, Xevious. Yeah, so that basically allows you to, it gives you four colors, um, and we split between the horizons, so we can have four different colors in the sky, four, and then you actually get more colors when you do like a hill or a transition scene. So between that and the merging, um, you know, we were able to, even though it's a low resolution play field, it still looks really good, I think it does. So, um, check, check. <laughs> Um, and and uh, oh, and the variety of controllers yeah. that you can use. So it's, you're not limited to the joystick anymore with that. Right. Yeah. That was actually a little bit of a challenge documenting because there are so many options. You can actually have. So you can use the joystick. That was the original one we did. And went well. Let's throw in driving controller support. But then you need another controller for shifting. So we're like, okay, we can use a second controller 
or it can be on the Quatari, or if you have a splitter, you can actually use like left and right because the uh, driving control controls up and down to shift. So you don't have to get a quad drive if you don't want to. Yeah, and your your brother was uh, made a, a custom controller over there as well, utilizing that steering wheel controller as well. So, yeah. and then you know I figured out when well, there's no way we're going to fit in paddles because it takes too much. But I came up with a unique way to read the paddles every uh, every line, so it only takes up um, seven cycles instead of uh, twelve. And I went and I looked at exactly seven cycles of. I went, well, that's a sign. <laughs> so we put. Um, uh, Palace Sport in as well. So uh, that's amazing. So people who like the feel of more like a, a steering wheel can yeah. can play it that way. Yeah, we've had on uh, this uh, the demo with driving controller all day, and people love it. You know, I th I think that's probably the best way to play. It is. I, I like the driving controller as well the most. Yeah, and we can also use like uh, like my brother actually designed a, like a pedal, like a five dollar pedal that emulates you know the uh, shift button. So, or you can use it for gas if you want. And so there's a million ways to play it with it. Or you just play, if you just want to go cruise, put on automatic shift and you don't have to worry about the gear. So, oh, yeah. so. He's, he's got everything there. Good. And you've got a bunch of your back catalog here as well. Yes, absolutely, yeah. We, uh, we, um, sorry, yeah, I know. We, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, so we decided we picked 10 of our games that we republished. The only three that we didn't republish were, um, Ladybug the original, because we have Ladybug the, the new one, and plus it's been out for almost 20 years now. Yeah. Um, and then uh, this, two of our games are still sold at Atari Age, that's uh, Conquest of Mars and Avalanche. Those are Atari IPs, and they've, I don't know if they've given the blessing, but they've decided that this they're time, okay. They're yeah. fine to be in the store, so, yeah. so we're leaving those there. So but obviously all our new games, we've basically uh, you know used our artwork and our game and just rebranded it as Champ Games Publishing. So. Um, same quality that you know we've always had, and we just uh, just we know people wanted to make. It. And as it turns out, we sold almost all of our old stock, so it, I'm glad we actually uh, we reprinted them. So that's great. Last chance sale. <laughs> that's right, last chance sale here anyway. And you'll have these um, available on the Champ uh, Dot Games website coming yeah, up. I'm taking a break for probably two or three weeks, maybe a month, and then eventually we'll add all these. We already have all the ROMs in there, except for Turbo and. Uh, elevator agent so we'll be adding those in our store and then all the box copies as well so you know we have a couple hundred of the turbo the two new games and then a limited quantity of the old one so and then based on demand we'll you know we'll d determine whether we want to uh, print more so yeah and elevator agent and turbo arcade they're again pushing the limits of, of what can be done and also what can be even played with current technology in Stella and also the Harmony Encore. Absolutely. So what is the uh, path to getting those going on all of like Stella and also the Harmony Encore? Okay, yeah, well they work, both work on Stella already, so that's good. So, but you do need the latest 6.7 and there is some issues with um, the detection. It thinks that it's like a Tiger Vision thing, so um, I worked with Tom Yentz, and he sent me a build that's going to be in 7.0 that instead of detecting some obscure Tiger Vision game, it's going to know that's a 128K um, Harmony game. So, so that'll go away, but you can still get around it by just specifying the type when you start it. Okay, so that, that's what was the problem when I was doing it. Because oh, okay. <laughs> I was like, oh, I'll just see what's going on and I'll load it on Stella. Oh, I, I, um, I do have the latest 7, version 7, but I, yeah. I, I didn't remember yeah, to... The minus CDF, yeah. and that'll work, so... Um, so that's that. And then for Harmony, you know, I've been talking to Fred um, Biatari, he's the guy that makes these things. So he's had his plans on what he's going to do, whether it's a Harmony um, expansion module. Um, but right. the last time I talked to him, which I think is probably better, it's just sell a whole new Harmony. There's yeah. like a Harmony Encore Plus or whatever you want to call it, Super Harmony, which basically is going to be a Harmony cart that just has more capabilities in it that can support yeah. 128K, 256K games because, you know, it's only up from here. We're not going to, you know... You I know. think that's a good solution, like maybe after he's uh, developed all the modules to make a ultimate cart, so... Yeah, they just have, have them all. Exactly. So yeah. that way you don't have to have, you know, stacks. But it is good, it's a good um, option, to, you know, to save some money. But in my opinion, I think it's Harmony Encore cards or cards are pretty well priced anyway. They're not like hundreds of dollars anyway, so yeah. are people really going to want to save $40 when they can say... You know, I, I'd rather just have a whole new card as well. I can, I can see people getting those add-ons. They're fairly cheap, $10, $15, $20. Yeah. 
Yeah, but just just rather than you know 60 on a new car, it's like you know whatever. Yeah. Rather than have the like Sega Tower of Power going on yeah. uh, with the Harmony, <laughs> I have Module Five, Seven, and Eight that'll get this game just just one cartridge. I think that's a more elegant solution. So yeah. hopefully he'll eventually go with that once he's got all these modules, add-ons working nicely. I yeah. guess. Yeah, just put it all in a cart and sell it. I'm sure people would snag it up. So that's for sure. I know I would buy one. So yeah, you know, luckily for me, I get I get all the dev carts, but still yeah. it's a pain because I don't have a Harmony, so I I can only I got to burn elevator agent and I got to do turbo and I got to switch back and then yeah it's not fast and that's how we had to do it for the beta beta testing as well. Yeah. Uh, it's fine, but it's not like oh just load it on super At that quick. Point you might as well just have the real cart, which we do sell by the way. Um, yes. <laughs> yeah, I'm just saying like it takes all the convenience out of it. So you basically it's actually worse. So instead of just picking up a cartridge, now you have to go spend you know five minutes burning it and then put it in. So so the uh, aim to get. The new games in the store, you were saying to me, it was around December? Or? Yeah, we're hoping December, you know, we'll see what kind of sanity I have left, but that's what we're shooting for. We like, you know, people would want to have this stuff for the for the holidays, so, yes. and, you know, it's obviously good for us, you know, that's the time people I want to buy, so it's, uh, you know, we have a lot of stock, we had to buy like a thousand of these things just to get a re decent price point so we can keep the yeah. prices down. So you got to move them. Yeah, exactly, so <laughs> it's, it's like, that's going to dictate as well. If I, you know, we get a thousand, we sell a hundred, I'm going to be like, well, this is it, right? But hopefully the, uh, hopefully people uh, are excited by it and, yeah, you know, decide to. 70 wants somebody to grab a Maturbo arcade. Yeah, exactly. I, I saw that all over the, the message boards. Please, somebody grab me this. Grab yeah. So well, we do have, we're only selling 50 this at the show. We have like 10 left. And then um, we have 200 um, that will be put in the store. So there'll be not plenty, but certainly enough where if you want to buy in December, I'll be making announcements all over the place. They're not going to sell out in the first couple days, so you'll be able to grab them if you want to. So the same thing for an elevator agent. So uh, 200 of these, and then we have probably 40 each of the other games. So anyone who missed out in the last chance sale or just, you know, we're putting it off and then just wanted to buy them, you know, those would be there as well. So. And you knew how many were moving a month and a year, so you know how many to order to, to make sure that you have enough in the store to keep, yeah. keep supply up. Yeah, surprisingly, a lot of our old games sold the best today because I think people haven't seen them in a long time. They're not featured in the Atari's booth. So we just put Super Cobra down, and like four people came and played it and bought it, and we sold out of Super Cobra. Who would have thought? You know, so yeah. then the newer games, they we didn't put those out. Like Gorf, we haven't even put that out yet. and But but that sold out too eventually. But it's, you know, so it's hard to even judge because it is. it's an ever-growing, um, you know, uh, hobby. And you know, and communities. So there's people that either never seen this stuff before. It's new to them. You know, to them, it's like, oh, Gore for Arcade came out last year. It's like, I didn't know they had Scramble. You know, or Mappy, or Zookeeper, or that's right. They see one of these, and then they see another, and another, and they're like, oh, I'll take a bunch of them. That's what's happened. So you know, we had one guy buy all, all 12 games. So. Oh my God, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So we're like, hey, I need them all. So I'm, there you go. So. So, so just before the Elevator Agent and Turbo Arcade go into the store, we're going to have you on the show. We're going to do an unboxing. We're going to tell everybody they're in the, in the store. So uh, that'll, be fun, that'll yeah. be exciting. So yeah. we'll arrange that. We'll let everybody know okay, when that's going to happen. Well, thanks, everyone, to, uh, for the support. I don't know if I'm actually looking at anyone over there. But, uh, <laughs> um, yeah, so appreciate your time. Thanks for coming over. And, again, thanks for everything you guys do with the oh. testing. But obviously featuring our games on the show. So No problem. Of course, of course, John. Yep, and in some sometime... Later, Nathan, I, I don't know if he's still there. He's disappeared. He was like, camera, I'm gone. I don't even know what I look like. But, um, you know, hopefully this whole publishing thing kind of throws us out of whack with our development cycle. So we're hoping that, uh, yeah. you know, we got to get back to actually making games at some point. So obviously these are very complicated, long pro projects. So. so in the new year, after the break, after you put these in the store. Yeah, some shorter 32K games that aren't as involved. Still, you know, high quality, but not, you know, let's make a 256K, you know, adventure game that's going to take four years to develop. You know, even, if, you know, I would love to do that, but, you know. Well, there's Penult, so they, they could go buy Penult. That's a great game. Exactly, and then we'll come out with something that's... Uh, and, and so maybe some... Something. Satan's Hollow? Oh, my God. <laughs> or Devil's Boneyard, or whatever we're going to have to call it. Yeah, right. <laughs> Devil's Boneyard. Or, or maybe some sports games? Yeah, we're hoping... Um, yeah, we, just, we had a couple of people ask about Chan Schwartz baseball, but uh, it's been put on a hold, unfortunately, because Nathan's a big Mariners fan. For those who don't know, that's the uh, baseball team in Seattle. So you have to do it off-season? He has to no, do They have to win the World Series, he said, before he actually works on it. 
they oh, never geez. won a World Series. So, well, you better put some pressure on that team then. Yeah, exactly. So, I'd love to do hockey myself. To be honest with you, but either is fine with me. I yeah. think it would be both be fun. I think I'd prefer hockey. hockey. It's a higher yeah, action. I think hockey would be more accessible to people too. Sell better in Canada. Yeah, ex yeah, absolutely. But just in general, it's a pickup. You know, ice hockey by just hitting a stick and running into people and trying to shoot a goal. Just, yeah. Oh, by the way, in baseball, when you're on second and they hit a pop fly, don't go to third because if it's an infield fire rule, you'll be, you know. Yeah. What do I do? Just kick them and hit the puck in the thing. Okay. And you can just do arcade mode with the hockey and just start yeah, playing. We're gonna do that for baseball as well. So is there gonna be a fighting uh, element? Oh, absolutely. You gotta do that. One of my favorite games from the PC was uh, face-off hockey, and that had a perfect blend of action, but also beating people up. So you know, it was more like a boxing game. So I saw Nathan and he, he ran off. I was gonna get him to just say one word, hi, yeah. and that's it. But no. no, he ran off again. Yeah, exactly. Maybe maybe later. So thank you so much, John. Yeah, no, uh, yeah and uh, we're gonna do a little quick run around of your booth showing off all the games here. Excuse the mess, you know, it's been a busy day, but yeah, we gotta, uh, we are, we'll also be adding our um, t-shirts to the uh, store finally as well. And we'd also do plans for people that want to buy the ROM. Obviously before we had this uh, set up with Atari age, but since we're selling both now, we'll be able to do bulk deals where people can just uh, buy the ROM and cart at the same time. We'll be selling them all at the same time too. It won't be six months for this or nine months for that because, you know, it's just, since it's all in one place, it'll be easier to manage, so. Yeah, and you can put it out whenever you want as well. Yeah, there's no cycle. We're probably gonna avoid having one release a year. You know, just because it's too much pressure. Now it's like, we have something done in March, we're gonna put something up in the March, so. So, but we still shoot, shoot for PRG, but. This is the big, the big event. Nice to debut something, but you know, in general, it won't have to be our one time a year to release stuff. So, but that's it. So, uh, it went great. He's a great guy, and we really enjoyed it. So, did you get to see it? Oh yeah, I was in there. It was, it was great. I was, that was a couple of rows back, but it was very entertaining. I mean, they always do those talks with the old guys, and nothing against the old guys, but it's always just, you know, it's like remember when kind of thing. But for, you're talking about old guys, and how long have you been developing games? Back to the DOS days. Yeah, I'm 55, so I'm. But you know, they're always talking about the old days, and because they're all we're there. But it's nice. To, it was good to have a different perspective where. I'm only a few years younger than Gary, but with definitely different, much different experiences with homebrew. So I think it was a good idea by Tim to do that. Uh, it was a great matchup. Who, who won, do you think? No, it's no um, winning. I don't know. Everybody won. Yeah, exactly. The more games, the better. And I mean, they're putting out new games as well. I'm looking forward to uh, games past Circus Convoy. So he says he's working on two more. That's great. Actually, and that other one he was talking about with the 3D perspective or whatever. The, yeah. that's not, I was like, what is, what? What is this? A 3D? A couple of my Audacity games. Yeah, I have nothing but good things to say about Dave, Dan, and, uh, and Gary. They're wonderful guys. And the stuff they do is amazing. And I, I wish I had the tolerance and the patience to do all assembly. But... You know, it's like, you know, he, he had some good things to say about what Champ Games does too. So we can definitely coexist and be happy together. So it's, it's exactly. Everybody has their own idea for a game and there's lots of room for everybody's game. Exactly, we're taking different approaches to it. So you, it's just more for the gamer, so that's good. So. And people appreciate the way they do it and people appreciate the way you do it, pushing the boundaries or going old school. And the good news, in the end, what you have is a bunch of good, great games. I'd say great games. 100%. Well, we'll end it on that. Thank you so much, John. Always a pleasure to talk with you, and we'll have you on the show again soon. Bye-bye. So we're going to do a little tour, uh, showing off uh, all the games here. If Tanya wants to pick up the laptop and juggle two things at once and the cap power cable. How about I do this? <laughs> We'll have to excuse the, the craziness for a second here. So let's start around this side. Okay. Or can... do you want to hold this? Oh, uh, you yes. Can and talk, maybe. Weirdest mic. Weirdest mic I've ever seen. This is a mic that is supposed to mount on top of a camera. That's why it's super weird. But it's small, and that's why I have it. <laughs> okay. I don't think I can carry all this. Okay, so here we have Elevator Agent, a uh, brand new game that's come out. And there's their flyer for it. Read at your leisure, and they've got uh, all. They've got a bunch of Commodore monitors, which is always nice. Uh, you're all legends. Oh, thank you so much, RC70. 
Tanya needs a steady cam <laughs> rig and and a backpack. Yeah, yeah we'll do that next year. Eh? Yeah. Yeah, and I've seen people like with backpacks oh, of some years and they have like cameras mounted on their heads. It's crazy. And of course, Galagon, which we pre well, we premiere all these all these games on the show. It's always fun to have uh, uh, Champ Games premiere on the show. There we go. I don't know if we'll be able to get Nathan Strum in in shot. He is he has completely disappeared again. He's scared of the camera. We did get a photo of him if you went on Discord in the Atari Age Discord. And we can go just a little bit further. Oh, we messed. Oh, the cat. The. Hold on, I've got it. Okay. We'll watch the. Uh, the cable and nodding while we wait. Tanya's good at puzzles, so this is a real life puzzle. And Robot War 2684 is on display here. Oh, we're getting a photo here from S. Ramirez of the Champ Brothers. Yeah, there's lots of Atari Age members here and a lot of Atari Age devs as well. So it's been a lot of fun hanging out here. There we go. And we've got some great controllers. Yeah, 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 we'll do that after we uh, finish the stream. We'll get some photos. Okay, so let's go around to this side. Let me come past here so I'm this way. And there we go, Turbo Arcade, another brand new game. And behind that, we've got Mappy, and I think we've got Zookeeper in behind that. So really nice, uh, nice display. Oh, looks like they have the exact same computer we do. Didn't even notice that. And there's the boxes. Elevator agent box, really high quality. And Turbo Arcade. And their, their slogan, you can't do that on an Atari 2600. That's what I always say, that's impossible. They make the impossible possible. You didn't go with that one, eh? It's, it's too complicated to say. They gotta pay, they gotta pay by Yeah, yeah. I like that one, you can't do that on an Atari 2600. But they can. And there's the Turbo Arcade poster. And the elevator agent poster. And they've got a new shirt, Turbo Arcade shirt. Let's, there we go. Nice, straighten that one out. Very nice. And, and a Gorf shirt. Beautiful. Oh, thank you very much, Champ Brothers. There's Paul. And John. And Steve. And we will probably do a tour of the expo maybe tomorrow. And we'll also be talking with Atari with a very special announcement. Uh, something to do with ZPH. But well, you'll have to tune in tomorrow to find that out. Yeah, yeah. And is a, you got to have the teasers. At, I'm going to be flying. I'll have to wait till I get home so I can oh. see. Yeah, or, or order the Wi-Fi on the plane. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Give me the time. I'll, it's all I'll know. Yeah. Okay, so uh, we're done here. Uh, for today, probably, and uh, yeah, if you're in the area, we're going to go uh, hang out at Ground Control tonight, starting at 8 p.m. to midnight, and play some video games, have some drinks, and uh, hang out. So, uh, there's Tanya. Say bye, Tanya. And uh, say bye, Paul. Bye. When you're at Ground Control, say hi to uh, Major Tom for me. That's right. We'll <laughs> in, retro, in retro 80s fashion. That's right. So thanks everybody for tuning in and uh, we'll be back tomorrow and we'll do a tour of the whole place and uh, also talk with Atari. So we'll check you later. Bye-bye. Welcome back to ZPH at PRGE 2023 and we have a very uh, special guest and a very special surprise for everyone. Something to do with ZPH. It's very Inception-like, uh, very self-referential, very meta. Um, but we're in front of the Atari VCS, uh, the console from Atari, and we're with David Page here. Hey guys. Hey guys. I don't know. I, I, that's a very, to say, special guest. That's kind of... <laughs> yeah, I he's been know. on you the show before. It. You have yeah. to, it's kind of questionable, so... Yeah. <laughs> Put an asterisk beside yeah. it and a special. disclaimer. Yeah, special. special in s certain terms of special, yes. right? Yes. 
Um, yeah, we're in front of the Atari VCS, and people are asking, why are we in front of the Atari VCS? It's cool. Because it is cool. cool. And uh, because we have, there's been some new games released, I think, late yesterday. Should we talk about that? Should we talk about that? Uh, should we t go ahead. Yeah, go ahead, well, let's, let's talk. Happened. Say what happened. No, 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 no. It's totally fine. No, uh, uh, no. Uh, actually, let me, let, me, let me do say some of this. Yeah. So, as many people with VCSs know, uh, five new games came out. Uh, Artie, uh, uh, Strike Zone, uh, your game? ZPH the game, that's the reveal. See, I'm gonna say, I was gonna say ZPH. Uh, oh, yeah, that's I'm a mispronounce. So you can say it in your own language. Z, 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 ZPH, <laughs> the game, uh, and an EXO. Um, and some of you may have had a wonderful surprise as I accidentally, instead of hitting featured, I hit default. And so a good many of you, 200-ish uh, people, uh, got a wonderful gift uh, now, Muddy, funds, uh, Muddy is not going to be penalized. He's going to get his royalties as if every one of those had been purchased. Very good. And very nice. Everyone is going to be able to keep their game. I'm eating it. Uh, and but the Blame is on you. The blame, yeah. uh, and, and the blame is, is on me. And nobody is upset about it, actually. No, well, I'm upset the, about yeah. it. I'm a, and the reason I'm upset about it is like, okay, you know, the, the VCS is a small console, so, you know, it's like that money is like, that hurts a touch, you know. It's like that. Oh, that sucks. More Think of it as promo copies, I guess. But for me, what I feel is the most uh, hurtful thing on the whole thing is the uh, issue of competency. You know. Uh, yeah. Oh, even though it's a benefit to everyone else, is oh Atari fucked up again. Oh, uh, they screwed up again. And I have to sit there and go, yeah. I did. I made a mistake. Even though it was to the benefit, and even though Muddy is not going to be uh, penalized for that. Yeah. I screwed up, and so that narrative of Atari doesn't know their butt from the hole in the ground, <laughs> I felt really awful on yeah. because of that. And uh, so I hope everyone enjoyed it. EXO is awesome, buddy. Yes. Sorry about that, but you're not being penalized, and yeah. uh, and it's all on me. Eddie, so. But you're owning it. That's yeah. what counts. Yeah. Uh, you're discussing it. That's good. And, and I and I could have, as you know, through the software, I could have removed all those games. But I think that, that would, would have be been awful. maybe worse because yeah. I hate that. Yeah. You know, Here's we nope. we have that in case of there's some kind of fraud or something yeah. like that, or there's some kind of critical error that we have an error or something like that. I don't know how, but we would have the ability then to remove that. But to do something like that. On, a, on something that I made a mistake on, that's, to me personally, that's abhorrent. Yeah. So I wasn't going to do that, uh, even though I had the power to do something like that. I was like, no, I just need to own my mistake and just enjoy, guys, enjoy, yeah. so. It's a present. It's, it's a, a present. present to everyone out there. Let's spin it positively. Well, I was saying before, I said, you know, we really need to start doing some things on the VCS to really kind of do some attention grabbing and all that. This is not exactly what I had in mind, but you know what? <laughs> so let's scroll yeah. over to the new games. Uh, here it is, is ZPH that? the game. Oh. Oh what God. is that? How did you get on here? A pixelized version of myself, Erlen, Darcy, and Tanya, and some cats on there as well. Yeah, Tanya's behind the behind the camera, and uh, yeah, it's, it's an honor to be able to have uh, my game on ZPH. Thank you, Leandro Camera, as well for programming, making this amazing game for us. Uh, yeah, it's an honor to appear on an official Atari. Uh, yeah, uh, console now, here. I, I can't, uh, the, the, the Wi Fi in here sucks, so this is not connected. Otherwise, I would go into the detail page, but it has to download that information <laughs> off the Wi Fi. So, we would do the detail page and, and, uh, and show a few things. But Everybody out there will be able to yeah, see it. Yeah. But because I don't have Wi Fi, we can't look at that page. But we can play the game. So it's oh, excellent. Yeah. So, um, people, you've, you've added five new games yes. recently, and these are homebrew games, mm -hmm. these are developers that yeah. are, are putting these games out, and uh, you're, you're wanting to reach out to the community and say, you've got a game, yeah. come to us, let us know about Please. your game, and we'll take a look at it, and we want it to bolster the number of awesome games on the system, yeah. like ZPH, and right. obviously Muddy Funster's yeah. games, and uh, yeah, so maybe talk a little bit yeah, no probably, picture I, there. I, 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 It'll be out there. I yeah. disconnected it when I, I probably disconnected it when it was downloaded and didn't download the uh, cover art because the cover art's there, so I don't know yeah. what's what. 
and uh, you know to to uh, gives more opportunities for people to play yeah. it yeah. the way they want to play it, yeah. hooked up to their TVs yeah. uh, using uh, you know classic classic joysticks. classic joysticks, or if you want to go modern, even this, even yes. this, ew, <laughs> twin sticks. I don't understand that. What? I I only know one button. That's, it. That's all I got. It's all maybe a second, you know. Yeah, you're around the corner there. So let's just boot this up. Whoa! <laughs> 3D effects. Yeah, That's go. awesome. There's the cats. So um, if there are developers out there or people who want to make games and get their games on there, how, like, take us through the process, uh, a shortened version of the sure, process. Sure. Well, in, you know, in terms of uh, the homebrew community, it is actually quite a short process versus, you know, a more complicated, more modern game, you know, the development process on it. Because of Stella or the, uh, you know, the 7800 emulator we have, there's, pro there's no, it hasn't been any work to do anything. You know, it's more, I'm doing the work of converting artwork to make it look good on the store page. And you did a great job of converting the ZPH artwork uh, onto the store. Yeah, yeah. It was fun. So if their game runs on Stella or if it runs on the 7800 emulator, it is good to go yeah. for this system. Yeah, no, absolutely. It's ready to go. Uh, I think originally, like EXO, just to take that as another example, uh, we ha had to have an update in, in that uh, in that emulator, so the sound originally wasn't sounding very good, and then we had updated, and and then Muddy was just like, oh, that sounds fantastic, and so it was like, great. Yeah, because awesome. EXO is pushing the limits for, for sound, so yes. you want to make sure that it yeah. works well before it goes on here. Once that update, once that update happens, uh, which was already had scheduled to happen, he was like, there's nothing for me to do. You know, because he was, he was concerned, do I have to modify things? Said, you don't modify anything, let us fix our end, right? Yeah. And once that update happened, he was like, oh, it works, it's fine, it's great. <laughs> so, th so they should come to you when they've got their game done and yeah, tested yeah. and working and then they approach you and then they show yeah. you, hey, so, I've got a game. Yeah, so uh, email me, I post my email all over the place, but it's david.page, P-A-I-G-E, at atari.com, and uh, talk to me, Say, tell me about your game, show me some pictures and all that. And uh, we work on an 80-20 split, uh, and you guys get 80%. Yeah. And, um, we only do a contract in terms of like a uh, um, uh, for digital distribution on the VCS. We're not excluding like it's excluding the cartridges or excluding yeah. doing you know. You so it's want a non-exclusive thing. Non it's like you want it on our system. It doesn't impact any, any other, other thing. any yeah. other thing. So you know, 80-20 split on that, and, and they can pull it anytime they want. It's like yeah. oh, I'm done with that. Yeah. 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 I mean, unfortunately, we had a game not a homebrew, but a game developer. Uh, who went out of business and they said, you know, don't sell our game anymore. So we had to take it out of the store, but I have to, if someone who already owns it has to, they had to erase it for whatever reason, I have to like configure and manually do it to get it back on their system. But okay. I try to maintain everything that has been purchased. It's only one example that it's ever happened, but yeah. we can do that. So if you kill, you know, say, I don't want you to sell our game anymore, I don't yeah. know why, but you know you have that option. And but I just say you know I want to maintain people who have purchased their games. They own those games, and I maintain that. So you know. Yeah. So it sounds pretty easy <laughs> to get the game on. I yeah. try to make it as easy as possible. And you know the hardest part of all of this is reaching out to everyone. You know I right. I only have so many hours in the day that I can reach out, and you know they may not necessarily see. Uh, who I am or care who I am right. and may not respond back right away. So there's always that lag. So it's for a moment. I need Pitch to go to the information booth. Pitch, please go to the retro game pitch. information booth. Pitch. Pitch. Go, go. Please, please stop him talking. Please. Booth. Thank you. There we go. And I know you reached out to me early on yeah. in the process. Hey, what are the good developers out there? Yes. So you're yes. looking for looking. good development. Yeah. And I want this to be, and hopefully down the road, when a new game comes and they, and you know, the first content they're going to have is Al, that Al can be at the same time, okay, let's talk about the parameters of making a cartridge. Oh, and digital distribution on the VCS? And if you, you know, it's a yes or no. If you don't want to, you don't have to, but why not? You know, that's more eyeballs on yeah. your game to enjoy the, your creation yeah. and not, you know, and not everyone is cartridge based. Some people love the non, 
physical and ease of use and things like that. Some people have run out of space, like myself, for, sure, for sure. plastic and paper, and yeah. it's piled to the ceiling already, so it's like, okay, I have to stop. <laughs> I'll do it digital now, and I've gone digital in my modern uh, gaming as well, like yeah. I have a VCS, I've... But now I download things through PC because I just, I can't buy any it's more hard. stuff. It's, it's too much stuff. It's tough. It is. But I think, I think ultimately it's about choice, you know, yeah. and, and, and getting more accessibility to these really great and creative games uh, and getting it every which way you can. Physical cartridge, digital download, and enjoy the game. Because that's yeah. what it's about. It's enjoying a game. Yeah. Right? So, yeah. Yep. Yeah. And uh, Thomas asks, what's that uh, console in the background that is playing Kaboom? Well, what? it's a 2600 plus. 2600 plus? Yeah. There we go. Oh, there we go. Is that in the background? Yeah, it can kind of see it. I, I'm I amazed. <laughs> yeah, I'm amazed that uh, somebody recognized the green, I guess. Yes, and I think there was some discussion about the jitters. We have been talking to people about this. It's it's a little bit of wear and tear in this particular one. I think this one got dropped. Uh, it's possible. I mean, a lot of traffic yes. through here. Because with number two, absolutely zero jitters. Okay, that, yeah. So I think one got dropped and uh, and has been had a little wear and tear, but we're all, but literally just before you hit live, we were talking about, because a couple of people can't, there's some jittery, and we're like, no, when we run the test, it's yeah. pixel perfect on there. But then we picked it up and we ran the test cart and it was like, oh. oh. And are those old, old school or are those the new ones? These, oh. Okay, so somebody dropped. Yeah. Someone dropped. So, But it's an emphasis of, okay, we have to double check on maybe is there some reinforcement we got to do on there. So it's, it's, an, it's not an excuse, but it's also an opportunity to make things better. So, And um, I think there's a post that saying people come by, bring your cartridges, yeah. test them out on the 2600 oh, yeah. plus. We've had a lot of people. Yeah, we've had a lot of people testing. So you can update the uh, the spreadsheet of what works and what's yeah. what you need to work on and yeah. we, and and a lot of them were passes, you know. We had, Oh, that's good. Yeah, He-Man Masters of the Universe from M uh, Network. That was a fail. So anyone who's a He-Man fan right now, it's a fail, but yeah. uh, those few who have that cartridge. Right. <laughs> but I think the important thing to know is that we are, you know, we're testing and input from everyone else to what's not working. We're able to then, you know, we're able to make changes and make updates that right now, I, I would say it's a fail at the moment, right? right? And Something to work on. And, and it will be worked on, you know. Uh, Al and, and the representative of Playon, who's deep into the, you know, into the manufacturing of this. So Playon is here as well. Yeah, so they're, they're, they're watching, they're listening. Yeah. yeah, and they were just like sitting at dinner, just like code and all the things that were just like, woo, over my head. <laughs> yeah. But they were talking about solutions and how to do this and how to solve these problems. And it was like, oh, there's just, it seems like there's already solutions in the works. So... It's been really great, so uh, and that's one of the great things about the 2600 Plus is that we're not just making it and sending it out there and saying good luck to you, which kind of was what the Retron 77, because that's, you know, people yeah. say, what's the difference between a Retron 77 and, and that? Build the quality yeah. and actually caring about, you know, getting things at 100%. Yeah, because the community had to kind of pick up the ball on that one and put out their own community build and because they just put out the Retron 77 and said good luck. This is the way it is. And, yeah. and if the community finds a solution, tell us so that we can incorporate that. You know, it's yeah. it, it's all hands on deck to a certain degree. We want your feedback. We want your solutions too. And say, oh, did you try this? Well, maybe we didn't. Yeah. You know, yeah. I mean, we're not all knowing. We're not all powerful. You know, uh, and everybody has their specialty, especially yeah. in the community. Yeah. And and that's what I encourage is and what I like about the community that we all work together. Yeah. And and I see that coming from Atari moving yeah. forward better and better right. is that the, the communication, the cooperation, the yeah. feedback, the back and forth. Trying and the best we can. Yeah, trying the best we can. You know, we can't listen to, we can't do every suggestion out there, but it's every suggestion that's been out there, we read it and we take consideration of that, you know. Yeah. So, you know, sometimes there's other forces in play, you know, cost, uh, you know. Yes. Time and technical ability and things like that. But, 
nothing is ignored and everything is listened to, but whether we could act on it, you know, that's where we have to do some weighing. Yeah, because if you throw everything that everybody wants into a console, right. it's going to cost 250 300 <laughs> right. and then the amount of people that can buy that goes to very it's, small it's amounts. Strength, sure, yeah, so there's a, there's a, there's a balance there's between balance. that. There's a, there's a balance, you know, we, we, want, we want a product that's going to make everyone happy but you know it's it's the reality we can't make every single person happy we're gonna get damn close as we can uh, thrust has a a question yep. and I, do, I think this was possible on the the Retron yep. 77 OT, OTG I know you do updating mm -hmm. um, on the through a USB-C cable you can right. update where the, the uh, yeah, where firmware the, where where the power is now is a USB-C so you will be able to plug that into the computer and you know I don't know the delivery system for updates but that's the path of updating is take your plug and do the firmware update and I guess the question is if there is any storage on there that is free that could there can be um, data put on there for games. I mean, it's going to be it's ripped a, apart as soon as somebody gets it in their hands. Right. The public I, gets it in their hands. There's no, there's no like, uh, like storage device on there outside of the storage of what the cartridge is dumping on there to, to flash. But there's nothing access to that. And I guess any possibility would be like uh, a USB-C connector to an external SD card reader. That I suppose. I suppose. I. Uh, but I, I. don't. I don't know. I don't know. It wouldn't have that functionality built in no, to no, read no, no, from no. somewhere else. No. Yeah. So no. It'd have to be kind of added on later or hacked in or something like. And, that. And you know, hey, you got you guys out there. You're clever. I'm sure if there's a way to do it, you're going to figure it out. But it wasn't designed to do that. It's designed to be one at a time. A cartridge-based system. You yeah. know. And read the cart you put in. Play that. You want to yeah, put in another yeah, cart. Right. You put in it. Yeah. So it, I mean, it's theoretically possible, but that's I'm for sure somebody to like really go in depth yeah. and, and find that out later. Yeah, you know, and, and you guys are going to take it apart and you're going to figure that out. But I mean, it's it's based on Linux, right? Linux. It's is it uh, a I believe so. yeah, 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 yeah. So I mean, the Linux experts will be able to like mount a drive and 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 redirect the read. Well, <laughs> so I I was talking to the guys at Botocera. Um, I I I gave them a controller so that we can get proper uh, a paddle and, and joystick support on Bado Serra natively. Yeah. And he looked at the 2600, he said, oh, is that 2600 plus? And I said, yeah. And he said, I bet you I can get uh, uh, Bado Serra to run on that. And I was like, you know what, I bet you could. I don't know, you know, it's, you know, uh, so we'll see. We might have uh, 2600 pluses that are reflashed as Bado Serras, but we're not going to officially support that, all right? <laughs> no, of course, anything that somebody else does, they're kind of they, on their they, own. They're on your own. Void on your own risk. Yeah, <laughs> yep. you'll have to put on a shirt that says, I void warranties. Yeah, yeah so. For a living. So I'm looking forward to see what the community can find out more about what sure. the extra capabilities yeah. of that system are. And I think it's already been released, what kind of processor that it yeah, runs. It's rock, I mean, it's on the website. It's a rock chip. Uh, I don't know the, uh, the specific number, but it's a rock chip. We're not hiding any yeah. of that information. So they'll know how far they can yeah, push yeah, it already. Sure. Yeah. sure, yeah. Well, it's been great talking with you yet again, David. Uh, it's. Uh, yeah, so again, uh, anyone out there with a homebrew, if you have interest in coming to the VCS, email me, david.page at uh, atari.com, uh, please. And, you know, Thrust, um, I know you... From a past, uh, you know, from several past um, things, you know, give me an email. I know in the past, uh, you know, the previous Atari iterations were like trying to take your game or something like that. I have no interest in taking your game, but if you want to put it on there, again, you have all rights to your game, and I have zero interest in taking it. If you want to sell us your game, we could talk about that, you know, but. Um, it's your game, it's your IP, it's your property. We're just doing a digital distribution. Again, an 80-20 split on that. And, uh, you know, I hope, you know, I know Thrust, you're, you're uh, you know, you're more... A skeptic, the, let's more say. More of a skeptic. And I get it, I understand it, but give me an email, let's talk, and, you know, your game is great, so I would love to have it on the VCS. Yeah, and I think if you can win over uh, Thomas Yench Thrust, I think yeah. you can win over anyone. So yeah, that, there's, a, there's a challenge. It's a challenge, <laughs> you know, but like I said before when I was on your show before, it's, uh, you know, our action, uh, my words are nothing unless I'm backing up with action. And I'm hoping to show that I've been doing, you know, 
I, seen a lot I, of action, and that's very positive. I screwed up on, on EXL. I'm owning it, and you guys get to reap the benefit of that. And again, I hate the fact that it brings that competency level on there, but uh, it would be stupid of me to try to... But you owned it, and you did the right thing, and oh, yeah, so it's great. Yeah. So great talking with you, David, Thank you. Thank you very much. and great having you on the stream again. Yeah. And, uh, and you're, you're so fortunate. I had, my voice is almost gone, so I'm not totally talking, talking as much as I normally do. And and I I I for totally <laughs> forgot about that. You powered through it. I know. I'm starting to sound like Lucille Ball. Oh, Ricky, come on, <laughs> let's go now. <laughs> All right, I'll go. So we'll enjoy the rest of the PRGE and... Uh, I have to leave the booth. I haven't left the booth yet. Oh, you're not allowed unless Al's... Oh, you can. Al's back. So you, you can leave the booth now. All right. All right. Thank you. Okay. Bye now. Bye-bye. So uh, we're going to take a tiny... Oh, should we go look at the 2600 plus? Oh, there's Tanya. Hi. Hi. Having a wonderful convention. Let's actually <laughs> look at the 2600 plus because... Most people, next, next door. yeah, next door. Okay. So we'll just shift the camera over a little bit, and I think we have enough uh, USB key, USB cable. We'll just move it over a little bit because I'm sure people are very interested in it. Uh, no, it's just like, um, oh, maybe it is off. What happened to it? Poor thing. Oh, I've got a light on the monitor. Nothing on the monitor. Yeah, it was just on. <laughs> oh no! I think somebody. I think um, the. Can you touch the front of it. Touch the front is the button. No, no. There. Oh, no. There's a button underneath. Oh, oh there. there we go. Okay, we're getting there. We've got the monitor because I think the dev um, was playing around with it and doing some stuff. Oh, that doesn't have to be on the edge there. So we've got Kaboom. And they've got a selection of games here. Uh, four games in one, which is the one that comes with it. There you go. Um, yeah, if you have any questions about this, uh, that we, we've got Warlords here, Medieval Mayhem, Ultra Scuzzy Side, Vroom, and Drive. Uh-oh, Thomas. Look at this. We've got Vroom on here. Should I put it in? Is this sacrilege? <laughs> Let's see. Tan, you want to come over here and play Vroom with me? Yes. <laughs> yes. This Vroom? turn off? No, it's back on. The paddles are on. Yep. Oh, yeah, Vroom. That's perfect. Yep. So. Can you slide back slightly? Ah! <laughs> feet out of the way. There we go. Sacrilege. Thomas Yench's game on an oh, Atari no. product. <laughs> Uh oh. Only, only if it works with a Quadtari. Oh, there is a Quadtari over there. I'd have to unbox it. Can you? Sorry, no. Can you? Can you lean back slightly and tilt the camera? Oh, okay. Because it's quite, quite a wide angle. Oh, I was gonna say push it out that way a little bit. Oh, we're good. Is that good? You yeah. can see us. Hi. Oh, I see. Like that. That's better. Yeah, that's what I was gonna suggest. Uh, does it work with the Quadtari? That's a good question. Um, let's see. Now, this is an, uh, um, a Stella emulator. And I don't see why it wouldn't work with the Quadtari. But uh, I, the only one that's available is in a, in a package. So I don't think I'd be allowed to unbox that yeah, over there. Okay. okay. Let's uh, restart this. Okay, press your button. Ah, they're not doing anything. No, no support on the Atari Plus. It's a fail. I'm gonna put the microphone down or hand it to Tanya. All right. <laughs> oh, this is wobbly. I think he said one of them was. Did he say one of them wasn't working? Let's plug it in port two. Oh yeah. This is really wobbly. Oh my god, that's so loose. No, still. I don't have high confidence in the ports on the uh, 2600 plus because I like this just slides out. There's no grab on this. This is the official um, paddles, 
on the official 2600 plus and it just slides in and out like it's not even on port one it's a bit more um solid let's try that again maybe reboot it hold on uh, can i turn it off again? yeah turn it off and back on so far it's a fail for vroom but uh hmm 2600 plus seems to know me takes a bit does it yeah because it's like literally booting up the system oh, I see. I want to see eight people playing it at once. Let's go. <laughs> Not detected as paddle game. Oh, that might be it. Oh, no, there's no work on this. Do we have? No. So, um, we'll have to play so Stella game. is not detecting the cart as a paddle game. It's detecting it as a joystick game. Oh. Uh, yeah, so that's... Is there a game select? A f well, that's different games. Okay. Let's switch to black and white. Maybe that'll help. No, it doesn't. Okay, so that's a fail out of the box. So they will have to like specify if Vroom is inserted, detect paddles, yeah. like update something. So yeah, that's a, that's a big fail. What is this? That's like the dev, ca dev cart. Let's put in the dev cart. The dev cart? It's here. What is it? Oh. Maybe if I put it right side up. Yeah, maybe not. It's because the label is down. It's backwards. Let's see what's on this cartridge. <laughs> Booting. It's loading a game. It's thinking about it. It's probably for testing. Oh, it is. It's testing. So, fire one, fire two. Okay, the paddles are detecting on here, but it's just for the game. It just doesn't, it doesn't know that this is a paddle game. It's thinking it's a, um, a, a joystick game. Yeah. So there you go, Thomas. Uh, do they have a CX-40 available? Yeah, they do. Um, and that would kind of work for Vroom, like you could press in a direction and it would work, but I mean, we kind of already know that that would work. Um, let's took and put in the uh, four games in one cartridge. You don't actually have to turn the system off um, when you, really? yeah, because it's not, it's not an active port. It's just like, oh, is there a cartridge in? I'm going to start up the new game. Gotcha. So you can just leave it on? Yeah, you can leave it on. So this has dip switches in it. Oh, it's a paddle game. Yeah, this one's there? been dropped, I think. Oh, we're in black and white. Which one's been dropped? Port. Oh, he was saying it's not. Yeah, port number one. Yeah, this is, they need to get a new uh, paddle out. Rainbow, very nice. Very nice. Oh yeah, it's, uh, they need a new one. So now theoretically we should be able to switch the dips and, oh, it just automatically detected that it's a new game. I wonder how it does that. It's like, oh, you put in a new cartridge. Yeah, I think this is a joystick game. Anyway. <laughs> uh, oh yeah, let's do Medieval Mayhem. Good paddle game. How is everyone doing out there? Hope you're enjoying your Sunday. <laughs> yeah, it was a shitty ad for my uh, for ZPH the game <laughs> on uh, v on the VCS. Okay, players two. So if you're not interested in ZPH the game, <laughs> or you already have it on cartridge, or you don't have a VCS, then it was not much information for you. Oh, this paddle. No, a Twitch ad. Oh, okay. That's your complaining about the stream. Ah, it's just an ad for Atari. No, I'm trying to uh, 
when I talk with Atari, it's all about trying to um, get them to listen to the community and get them to um, communicate with the community as much as possible because we we want oh fun <laughs> they were having a little back and forth oh they can't oh yeah they can see the screen oh we're up to two um yeah to, <laughs> so much fun well, we got rid of one of the enemies yeah we want atari to be good not not terrible so when i have them on the show it's to get them to listen to us in the community and not just act without thinking about what people actually want out of their products and to do the best they can with what they have and like if we could increase the compatibility of the 2600 plus to 100 percent which is impossible because it'll never read the arm chip but say they put out a 2600 plus plus they really at that point should be listening to the community and going okay we need a hundred percent compatibility with this we need a product that is going to work for everybody's game and not have a question mark beside a release of a new homebrew and go oh now we have to just uh, qualify if you know Vroom is going to work with it and in like the Atari Age store it's going to have to say not compatible yet or not compatible with the tw with the 2600 plus and that just looks bad like somebody buying Vroom and then and they have a 2600 plus and they put Vroom into this wh who do you think they're going to blame they're going to blame either the 2600 plus or they're going to blame Vroom and I'm going to think they're going to probably blame the cartridge because all of their other cartridges work that they bought so far and that's really not a good look and then you're going to get questions to Thomas Yench, you're going to get questions to Atari Age and it just causes more trouble than it's worth. I would have expected the 2600 to detect the paddles. Yeah, I mean it's all on, you know, how it's set up. There's still room to improve on some of these things, though. I mean, that's I think the there's a little bit of room to improve. Like on the um, software side. Yeah on, yeah, on the software side, on the firmware side, on the, on the compatibility, but it only goes so far because this is not an active port that can read cartridges past the initial dump. Gotcha. So any information you can get in the initial dump, then it's fine. But if you have an ARM chip on here, the ARM chip is active throughout the whole thing. True. So it needs to access the arm chip on the cartridge. And if it can't get to that, it's not going to work at all. And that's, that's, that's the problem. Um, luckily, Community to the Rescue was Stella RT. Yeah. And, uh, and that's progressing really, really well. Um, and they're getting higher and higher compatibility rates all the time. Uh, the Harmony cart works on it. Okay. The Uno cart works on it. Nice. And those are huge steps. So you can load lots and lots of games on it already. So, yeah. But Vroom could be dumped, so Stella didn't identify it correctly. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Um, Stella is not seeing it as, as or the as, version as of paddle game. yeah, the version of Stella or the settings they have in Stella is not detecting it as a paddle game, gotcha. um, or something along the line. Well, you can't tell in the internals, but anyway. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is have a little break, yes. and then we're going to do a quick a whirlwind tour. tour. Yeah. Um, go by the Champ Games booth, go by the Songbird booth. Show go a by, little bit of what's here. And yeah, show the crowd, show the atmosphere, walk around a little bit. So, uh, yeah, so stay tuned. We'll do that in about, you know, 15, 20 minutes, something like yeah. that. Yeah, so uh, thanks for hanging out with us. Hey, yeah, thanks. <laughs> yeah, you said something. Um, and uh, so hang on and just stay by your computers or watch for the uh, pop-up. So bye-bye. Uh, hello, hello, everyone. Back again. It's quicker than I thought. <laughs> so we're going to uh, do a whirlwind tour of PRGE. I'm just going to get the chat up on the screen while people filter in. 
stare at me while I click on my phone. There we go. I can see my face. And I've got the chat up. And I'm connected. Uh, eight people are watching. Okay. So we'll, um, yeah, we'll start going around. Let me know if you can hear me still and uh, the audio is good. If you can just say audio good, and then we can start up. So we've gone portable now. Sounds good. Thank you, RC70. Okay, so let's uh, start going through here. We're at the Atari Age booth. And uh, there's Al in April. Hey, Al. Wave to the stream. Oh, he's exhausted. He has no energy to even... Live. It's live. live. <laughs> yes. Hey, Al. How's it been going? It's Sunday. Hello, everybody. I'm awake. I got a little more sleep last night and hopefully more sleep tonight. I'm sure you've seen the booth already. Have you guys watched? Yeah, we did a tour of the booth. So we're starting here and we're going to kind of go around the expo, give people kind of an overview, a sense of, you know, the energy or the lack of energy on the Sunday in the afternoon. That's only going to take about five or six hours, given the size of this vendor hall this year. Oh, it's, it's absolutely massive. And I, and I kind of decided to do it today because there's a little bit less crowd that we have to fight through. Yeah, yeah. If you had tried it yesterday, all you would have seen is a sea of people everywhere. You've been getting bumped into by people constantly. The backs of heads of people and yeah. I mean, it usually does pick up a little bit in the afternoon. You know, people take their time getting here on uh, Sunday after they've seen the show Saturday. Yeah, people coming on Sunday afternoon to get to get the deals, the last minute deals from the vendors who don't want to take all this home. Exactly. I know. Don't tell me. I don't even think about that. Yeah. So about five hours. Yeah. We get to tear it all down. Oh, boy. Yeah, I'll be here for that. Yeah. I appreciate that. You guys are you guys rock with the help you gave us earlier. Uh, no problem. So, and then, of course, tearing down. And then, you know, they get the long drive back to Austin. So, and, oh yeah, you have a much longer drive than uh, we do. So. Uh, I'll, I'll trade you, I'll go up to Canada and you guys can drive to, to Austin. Well, we've never visited Austin. We've always wanted to. So, hey, you can go to Vancouver. Yeah, we can do tradesies for a bit. I definitely would love to visit Vancouver. And Austin's great. If you like Portland, you love Austin as well. Oh, very, very nice, awesome. Yeah, absolutely. And it probably won't be raining in, in Austin. But, oh, even better. Yeah, but it might be 105 degrees or more. Well, that's a nice change for us. That'll be that'll be totally fine for a bit. So I don't know you're Yeah, might might be a bit much. So, um, yeah. So we'll uh, continue on, and uh, good luck for the rest of the uh, PRGE, and take it easy. It's things have calmed down a little bit, which is which is good. Yeah, it's a little bit more relaxing. Like if it was yesterday, you would not be talking to me right now. There's yeah. no, and that's that we couldn't have, no. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you. I'm glad you stopped by. Hope you enjoyed the booth. Hope everyone enjoyed the tour. Uh, and hopefully we'll be back next year with the same size or even bigger booth. Well, yeah. even bigger. Oh my God. We'll definitely be here next year. It's just, yeah. and we're right by the entrance again. So if we can get the same spot like this, would be perfect. This, this was an absolute ideal spot and, and everything was nice and spaced out. The monitors aren't yeah. touching this year, uh, which, which are good. Yeah. <laughs> It's, it's really nice. Yeah, the, the corridor is a little, a little larger and there's plenty of room for everyone to walk around with the games. And we still even had more consoles than last year. So yeah. and yeah, every year it increases in the number of systems. And you barely had enough room to put up all the posters. Like it fit yeah. just perfectly. Yeah, normally we don't have two walls like this. And one wall is 45 feet, one's 30. And it, we, I was able to print a banner for every single game this year and hang them up. Never been able to do that before. Yeah, it's an absolutely beautiful display. So we'll see you around. Thank you, and have fun. Have a safe trip back up to uh, Vancouver. Thank you so much. Bye-bye, uh, everybody. Bye-bye, <laughs> Al. Okay, so let's uh, let's just kind of walk through. You don't have to be that close. That's pretty close. Yeah. yeah. About there. Yeah. Yep. So we're going to make our way over to Champ Games booth and say hi to uh, Paul and John Champo and see who else is there. See if Nathan Strum hides his... Uh, as soon as we see him, he's a little, uh, little camera shy. It's nice having a detached microphone. I can just wander around. So there's still lots of people here. Volume is slightly low. Well, louder, louder. Okay. Oh, well, don't know if I can do much. So you'll have to just turn up your, turn up your volumes because it is quite loud in here, unless something happened, but, um, oh, they can still hear me, so, 
Blockbuster, got it at a garage sale for 10 years over the summer. So here we are at the Champ Games booth and it's very, very busy and active. John Shampo behind me. Good display here. I mean, we already visited here, so we don't need to chat again, but uh, we're just kind of, and we wouldn't be able to anyway. And Nathan Strum's not here, of course. <laughs> so that's okay, par for the course. We'll continue on. Um, tons and tons of vendors here. So actually you don't even need to keep me in frame. You can just get stuff. So yeah, we'll go over to Argon because they're right over here. Tons of games like, and, and also tons of fun video game accessories. Uh, we've already bought some stuff for our um, retro video gaming night that we're holding with our friends in November. Um, so uh, yeah, it's, it's got everything all the way. I mean, even a lot of Vectrex here this year and and 2600, but not not a ton, of course. Oh, looks like we can take over the Argon booth. Nobody's here to talk to. Bri Brian's not in the booth, but here. Oh, that's true. So we can just take a look at the display and they've got Argon running on their system here. And they're another outlet. That's why we've had them on the show before. They're, they're a supporter of the Atari Homebrew Awards uh, as well. Uh, they help sponsor it. And it's another outlet for uh, Homebrew Games. And the more platforms Homebrew Games can be on, uh, obviously the better. You got to check under the table for Nathan. He could have been hiding there. He could have seen us coming. And he's like, oh, got to get out of there. Let's, uh, let's keep going. Um, yeah, and there's personalities here. I won't count myself amongst them, but there's some, uh, some tables where there's personalities. I don't know if John Hancock's back at his booth or not. Um, do you remember where his booth is? Okay. Yeah, big variety of stuff here. Statari 8-bit computers, a couple of those. Some things I was looking for that I didn't find. I was looking for a uh, Commodore 64 PAL version, but um, I didn't have any hope of, oh, these, we like these things, very colorful. Yeah, yeah, lots of video game adjacent things. Um, lots of artwork, of course, oh, sorry. 3D printing has helped a lot with uh, making things that people couldn't make before. Which way should we go? I have no sense of direction. It's so big. One more this way. Some t-shirts here. We didn't find any this year that we really, really wanted, um, but there's still lots of t-shirts. Some that we've bought before. Um, hey. And we bought some t-shirts here last, last year or the year before at this booth. Um, they have some really cool, cool, very cool designs nothing a hundred percent jumped out for us i'm i'm very picky with t-shirts yeah we've already got lots of t-shirts too yeah this this is kind of the middle section and on the right hand side you can see there's more artsy kind of things and less games um yeah this is kind of the art aisle Still quite a number of people here on Sunday. And I think some people come on Sunday because it's a bit more relaxed. It's not as intense. Yeah, it's not as intense as Saturday. And like I said, uh, Sunday. Oh, yeah. Here's the, the row of celebrity booths. People have done like, you can hear some voices. People have done uh, voice, -over voice work on some of the video games. Artwork on some of the video games. Um, Oh yeah, the, I was looking for the C64 PAL version because a lot of games that are made for the C64 and the PAL, I was also looking in vain uh, for the Atari video music, which is impossible to find. There's no chance of that. Um, I mean, the rare games, I would say, unless they're priced not to move, um, they would be they would be gone by now. Because this year they made an interesting choice 
of charging a little bit more for early entrance. So some people got in early, an hour early for paying like double, like $200 for tickets to get in an hour early which was, I, I think, not, not a great thing to do, but um, it's, it's something they did. <laughs> Some artifacts while moving around, maybe it would help to reduce the 720p. Well, we won't be able to do that at this point, unfortunately. Oh, that stinks. Yeah, I, I'm not a big fan of special privileged tickets to get in. Um, yeah, let's go up that next aisle. For some reason, I still haven't seen that massive Blockbuster sign, even though it's massive. I have no idea where it is. Oh, oh, the Blockbuster experience right over there. Okay. And they also have the Tetris World Championship here every year, and that's a big draw. The people that play that at that high level is unbelievable. Like, they're so fast. I can't even, I can't even see that fast, let alone be able to play that fast. Early access, not just for new games. Yeah, it was early access to the sales floor. You can collapse that tripod if you want, if that's easier. No, it's fine. It's fine? It gives you a handle? And we've had, I posted a bunch of pictures of people that um, came up to me and recognized us from the stream. A lot of developers, of course. And, uh, Skittle? Sure. Yeah. So we're live streaming on Twitch right thank now. Thank you guys. So, yeah. The space igloo. And what this does is intensifies the flavors three to ten times. Wow. wow. Oh, thank oh, wow. you so much. Thank you very much. Yes, give us a shout out. We appreciate it. Oh yeah, thank you. Yeah. Very tasty. Yeah. Have a beautiful day today. You too. I love that. Yeah, people like the uh, like the camera. Hopefully those were vegan. They're Skittles. Well, they're Skittle adjacent, let's say. Are they? Oh, 100%? Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, good. Um, oh, yeah, we, we found some really nice pins at this booth. Yeah. Uh, also for our, our retro gaming night. Oh, and we went to ground control last night with uh, some of the people that we know here. Had uh, had some drinks and sat around, played some games. Met up with some people, yeah. A lot of them were very tired from, uh, a, lot, a lot of them were tired from traveling or they had to travel back the next day. Oh, there's John Hancock. Let's go say hi to him. Hello, hello, John. Okay. You do have something for me? Yes, always. Love hey. you do. Thank you for all the homebrew support. Well, thank you for yeah. making homebrew and be part of the community. That's it's right. totally awesome. Yeah. So what do you have here? Uh, I got uh, homebrews. I sold out of Game Panic 3. Also, hey. it's it's published on Atari VCS. Excellent. We were just talking with them. Yeah, and so I'm really excited. Uh, the other thing, too, uh, I'll have more copies at Torg of Game Panic 3, which is in Columbus, Ohio. Uh, I have Blockum Sockum for Jaguar, sold at cost, 25 bucks. Nice. Uh, Catacombs of Chaos, Retro Game Quest, that's kind of my legacy releases. My other new release is my Super Nintendo Super Blockum Sockum. So that's my newest release. And uh, last year, I, I still have a copy, some copies left of Sega Genesis Blockum Sockum. Nice. Yeah, lots of Blockum Sockums. Yeah, I, I want to port it uh, next year in television 7800. Oh, excellent. Oh, that's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah. So, how was the convention for you so far? Met a lot of people. You did some talks. Yeah, I did uh, three panels. Um, did some various stuff. I did my own panel today, and uh, yeah, just talking about collecting video games. Uh, Walmart just announced that they are discontinuing discontinuing physical releases. Oh. So that's going to impact collecting maybe in the future. Yeah. And so, but I'm happy to hear to just support the homebrew and a you know classic game yeah. market and. You're keeping physical media alive here? That's right, yes, absolutely. Physical for life. Exactly, I love physical games, the feel, the touch. It brings the nostalgia back 
from when we were growing up, it's yeah. like you, you get a new game, you open the box and you love that feeling. And I'm sure people coming up and buying your games get yeah. that feeling as well. Yeah, I love it. And uh, a charity event that I was connected to uh, is coming back. A good friend of mine's organizing it. So Callots Gamers for Kids is a charity event ran by all female staff, April 13th in Longview, Washington. Driving distance from Canada. It is not too, too far for us. And uh, it's been it's been four years since we had it. So uh, I want to do a shout out for that. For anybody that can come to support a good cause, it goes to the emergency support shelter. So it's, it's in the community based. And uh, uh, I would love for anybody in the area to come. Excellent. Yeah, that's excellent. But so, get for it. Uh, yep. Yeah, I'm going to give you uh, digital copies of all the uh, games. Oh, wow. Thank you so much, John. Yeah, at least I can do that. Enjoy it, play it. You don't have to yeah. do anything with it. Just play it on the show, just show it off. You. Yeah, Super Blockum Sockums on there, which is my new Super Nintendo release. I offer uh, all my games on digital on a on a digital USB pack that I sell at conventions. Excellent. Well, I have a multi cart for that, so I can load this onto multi cart and play it. For streamers and and people such as you that they give a lot back, people don't realize how much time and effort that you do doing this. You don't get paid for it. Uh, you get less than minimum wage. I, I get it. We, we all know, we all, yeah, we're all in the same boat. Yeah. So thank you so much for doing what you do and that's the least I can do. Well, thank you so much for what you do as well, John. It's it's all for the yeah. community, it's all for fun. Yeah. And uh, it's absolutely great. So it's great talk. Know that you help. She helps a lot, so she does. Two buttons, one for both of you. But oh, little little sure. button of my logo there, there you, there you go. Thank you. Thank you so much. Great talking with you, John, and see you around. Yeah, take care. Thank you. Always, always great talking with John and running into him. We ran into him at uh, Van Vancouver Retro Gaming Expo as well. He was doing talks there when we when we did a panel as well over there. Um, who else do we have to go to? We have to go to um, Opcode as well. I think they were actually, so, we were, so. We're we'll head over there and then we can show off the console gaming as well. Yes. And then, uh, yeah, I think that'll be about it. Yeah, I think the computer's gonna die at some point. Yes, that's right, we're probably very also, close. 20 minutes is the best we're gonna get at this, so how are we doing? Audio a bit too silent. Well, you'll have to turn it up. Um, unfortunately, it's, it is what it is. We're, do, we're doing ad hoc walking live kind of thing. So we'll cut through the middle there. Yeah. Elevator action is on eBay for two ninety nine. Oh no, that's a prototype. Okay, that would be very weird, yeah. and they wouldn't sell it because it's available. <laughs> and anybody buying it would be wasting their money. Uh. Let's try one more. Yeah. yeah. Nobody's in the booth. Oh no. Oh, we can show it off anyway. We can't, Eduardo's not there, so we'll show off Opcode's booth. Here we go. I hope you're having an amazing time here at the Retro We are. Over at the Tabletop Gaming Area, hosted by Epic Gaming. If you head over to the Tabletop Area, there is a Learn to Play session of a game called Fresh Blood. If you haven't had a chance to play this game, head over to the Tabletop Gaming Area. There's a Learn to Play session happening. Okay, we're going to leave the. We'll see if our Eduardo's back for Opcode Games. I always love this this thing, this display, yeah. old school. Um, where they have the couch and the, the old school TVs. The green shag carpet. The green shag carpet taped to the ground. Yeah, they've got Donkey Kong for the 2600 going. You can travel back in time to the 70s and 80s and sit down on an um, ancient couch. Um, and over here they have set up the uh, console gaming. I don't see any tabletop games, so I guess they cleared all those out. Mostly for eating now. Maybe it's only for Saturday. It's too bad I didn't uh, 
get to see any of those. So actually, let's just go along. Oh yeah, we'll head in here. And I can see the stream time, 21 minutes. So okay. we're still pretty good. I think we're okay. Yeah. Hey, Atari boy. <laughs> hmm? How's the chat? Oh, it's fine. Good. You can, can you smoke on those couches? Only if you do it very surreptitiously. <laughs> and maybe an e-cigarette. So many. Oh, let's see. There's four switches? So, some uh, four switch 2600. Oh, here's some more. Oh, they're all four switches. Yep. Uh, looking, looking sketchy on the uh, flat panel displays. Some interesting televisions here. Yeah, they should have hooked them up to CRTs. Oh my God, there's lots of 2600s. Here's a six switch light sixer, an Vader model. Video pinball, first generation consoles. Oh, three Vectraxes over here. Uh, playing Mindstorm built in. Uh, maybe a multi cart and Berserk there. Star Castle there. Nice. Turbo graphics over there. Oh, and here's the computer section over here. Texas Instruments. Atari 400, Atari 800, C64, uh, C, an Amiga, some Intellivisions, Coleco's, uh, a whole bunch of 7800s, more 2600s. Oh, lots of representation for 2600s. There's even more over there. That's really good. Oh, playing Medieval Mayhem. Oh, that's nice. It looks like it's having a problem. Oh yeah, that's the unfixed version of Medieval Mayhem they're playing, unfortunately. So it's all flipping out. <laughs> uh, got some more C64s, looks like. Um, some more 600XLs, 800XLs. Now we're moving into more modern some Xboxes, some Playstations, N64s, more Playstations, varieties one, two, three, SNESs. So yeah, if you want to play um, a console, any console, there there's lots here. And somebody is able to maintain them and keep them all working. Yeah, with the, with the, oh my God, here is the controller that takes multiple people to play. Let's get this angle here. Yeah, that is impressive. That's absolutely amazing that it's a functional controller. Oh, they're playing Mario Brothers. This takes a lot of cooperation for multiple people to play it all together. That's, that's, that's tough. You almost need like multiple people on of the D pad to even make it work. Cause it's such a, it's so heavy. Just hear how it, uh, have, they press it down. Oh my God. That's so heavy. <laughs> that's crazy. That's awesome. Oh yeah. There's a blockbuster display with, um, DVDs and VHS copies. And there was a VHS exchange here as well in one of the offshoot booths. The last Blockbuster, which is in Oregon. Wow, so there's still one more Blockbuster left. And I think they, they work in their official capacity as well. That is super awesome. They've got a huge area. And I guess this is like the game, like uh, trivia, and they use the stage for multiple purposes. Yeah. Okay, we're at 25 minutes now. So let's head back to opcode. So I think we have around 30 minutes on the battery for the laptop. No, last time it did go to 30. So I'm pretty confident about 30. 
There's lots of um, displays of people who are doing like homebrew games, like making their own homebrew games, yeah. putting them on cartridge on like SNES cartridges and Genesis cartridges. That's always really nice to see. There's even comics here. It's <laughs> a little bit of everything for, you know, our generation and what we grew up with. And representation for like uh, Japanese imports as well. Uh, I don't see anyone back at Opcode, but we'll we'll just take a scan through the booth. Oh, no. His partner's there. No Eduardo, but you have to tell you, have lunch at some point. So, got a whole bunch of uh, Coleco games here from Opcode and in television as well. Do a scan of their booth. Time, Time Pilot, new game from Opcode. I love Time Pilot. Such a fun game. It looks like an excellent, excellent version. Got a bunch of games laid out here. I've got to get Eduardo on uh, on the stream at some point and interview him. Carrot Top? Did somebody see Carrot Top passing by? I don't know. I don't know if uh, he's here. Maybe he's got a booth. <laughs> <laughs> so here's their lineup of their new games they're releasing. Gradius, Pac-Man DX, Nightmare, Goonies, Mooncresta, DK Arcade. So lots and lots of games. So I think... Um, Let's see, we're at 28 minutes now. I don't think we'd be able to make it over to the arcade. So let's just uh, sit down here and play some tennis. I don't know if you're gonna see. Let's set this up so that, uh, drop the legs on it. Here. Oh. How does that look? Yeah, great game. Go. We'll have Tanya and I play a round of tennis. Or something. Or something. Wow. Yeah, all set up there. Yeah, broadcasting <laughs> as best as we can. <laughs> so one player. Yeah, I'll play tennis. Still going. Can you hear me? James is playing tennis. Oh, it is low. Turn that up right oh. There. Tennis was too much for my parents, says Alnifer. Up a little. Up, 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 up. A lot? Yeah. There you go. Hello, hello. Yeah, we're good. All right. Well, I think we're going to shut it down soon before the battery dies. What do we have? Battery. I'll tell you in a second. Uh, it says 38% remaining. Oh, wow. Probably because the anyway. screen was off. That it probably was. helps a lot. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Maybe we can go with the arcade. Someone asked if we've been through the uh, Jaguar Museum. Yeah. Yes. Oh, tell them about the Jaguar Museum. Well, the Jaguar Museum's great. Uh, they have a lot of art in there, too. It's They have the whole um, Immortal John Hancock's uh, collection. I think him and someone else. I've, for, I've forgotten who it is and right now. Links, a complete collection of Lynx games. Yeah, complete collection of Lynx games. Uh, and then in one corner, they have kitten adoption. <laughs> and they have these, these tents set up. And for a donation, you can go and play with the 12-week-old kittens. So uh, I, I, we have to avoid that area of the Jaguar Museum because otherwise we're going to be crossing the border with a few more cats. So um, They were absolutely adorable and it took all our strength not to take one home. Yes, yes. <laughs> yes, Mr. Zarna, we, we did see the kittens in the corner. <laughs> oh no, kittens, exactly. They know their audience. They know gamers like their cats, so... 
<laughs> so I lost a tennis because I was distracted. Yeah. <laughs> but I got some points in. <laughs> okay, so um, we'll probably end the stream here. Um, so a little tour of PRG, it is massive. We can't cover everything. Um, I mean, it's just rows and rows of lots and lots of games. So I, I'd just be repeating myself. Look, there's more NES cartridges, more SNES, more Genesis, more PlayStation. Um, but uh, so we're going to enjoy the rest of the show and check out some more talks. Um, I've pretty much exhausted my list of gettable things. What have you got? Oh, what have I got? Well, I'm going to show it on the show, but I'll give you a sneak preview. Watch out. It's yeah, at the I, extension. I, I, can you um, minimize that? Uh, yeah. That arrow right there. There you go. So I can see the volume. Um, what did I get? I got two light guns. So now I have four light guns for the four player day. So we're going to play the uh, Ducks Away with four people. It's going to blind us because it's going to be so flickery uh, with all the clicking of the guns. I. Um, I recently got a very rare uh, N64 through eBay, but I needed some more controllers, so I got three more controllers for it. Yeah. I still do have to get some N64 games because I have zero. We might wait till the end of the, the show because that's when you get really good deals and people clear out a lot of what they have. So we just want a few N64 games. So we might see if we can get some cheap at the end of Yeah, the so I have something to play when it comes. Yeah. Um, what else did I do? get oh and i got um the power supply for an n64 nt uh north american power supply because the one that's coming is a japanese uh rare japanese variant um so i need a uh, a north american power supply for it so that i can use it here um and it, it expects the same power going to the console so it doesn't matter as long as you have the power pack which is detachable which is amazing um can you pull through the flicker uh, probably not. <laughs> yeah, having seizures. Um, obviously, I got the Atari Age and Champ Games games. So we're going to be highlighting those just before they go into the store, into both the stores and the Champ Games store and the Atari Age store. Um, so that'll be in November and December. <clears throat> um... Obviously, I got John Hancock's game, so we can show some, yeah, some of those on the game. Be fun. Yeah. Yeah, it was really nice of him. I was uh, like talking with him. Yeah. Um, did I get anything else? Like, I was really just sticking to my list mostly. Uh, we got some t shirts. We got Champ Games shirt. Champ Games shirt. Turbo shirts. Um, and then little things. Like, I got some enamel pins, and we got some little shot glasses for a retro gaming night. Oh, that's Which, right. You know, not games but no. game adjacent um, yeah we still need to find like little stuffies to give away for for stuffies. There's, there's a lot of stuffed animal vendors around so yeah, yeah. we got lots of photos with uh with fans with yeah. watcher friends friends of the show i like friends to say i don't like saying fans it's so weird <laughs> uh, friends of the show uh yeah we hung out with a lot of great people yes. um yeah. And uh, went to dinner. Oh, with the time is now one eighteen, which means in exactly twelve minutes we will be starting the Blockbuster World Championship Finals. In twelve minutes, at exactly one thirty p.m., we will be starting the Blockbuster World Championship Finals over in the Blockbuster Tournament area. Uh, we Make sure you catch this one, folks. It's going to be starting at one thirty. The Blockbuster okay. World Championship Finals. We will. We will. Okay. Uh, hey, hey, Blacka. Uh, we are at Portland Retro Gaming uh, 2023, Portland Retro Gaming Expo 2023 in Portland, Oregon. Yeah. It's on the last day. It was running since Friday and it's Sunday now here. Uh, Portland says on the joystick. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah, there you go. It's in the corner. Um, so it's just kind of wrapping up. Uh, we're here for another couple days because we like Portland. Yes. There's amazing restaurants here. City. Very interesting city. Love coming down here. So, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So we're going to um, check out some more talks here. Check out more booths. Um, help uh, Atari Age pack up. Yeah. Um, get some kittens. No, we're not getting any kittens. Oh, they're so adorable. 
We also saw some kittens in a store window as well for adoption. There are a lot of kittens up for adoption in Portland. If you're looking for so, so many kittens in Portland. They're, and they were all adorable. They were 12 weeks old. They were like teeny tiny holding your hand kittens. Teacup kittens. Oh, teacup kittens. They do grow though. They don't stay they, teacup. They, they do turn into sprites and cards eventually. So yeah. yeah. Turn into big fluffy cats. Yeah. Oh, I want big fluffy cats. <laughs> we don't need more. Yeah. They're not like video games. <laughs> no, we can't collect more cats. It uh, makes the house smell a bit more and yeah. yeah, I'd have a house full of cats if we had a bigger house. <laughs> so we're going to wrap up here. Um, thanks everybody for tuning in to all these live streams. Um, you know you uh, taking a little bit of time out of your day to watch our stream and, yeah, and hopefully it, some if you're not here uh, at some point you'll be able to uh, come to Portland and enjoy this it's a wonderful event so yeah they get big um, and I like kind of like this format better than the interviews and maybe we can do interviews like this next time rather like stream interviews run around and show the booths too and just see people see all the people so yeah it's a lot more yeah. portable uh, maybe we can figure out something for the battery situation so we can go longer yeah pay We're for the business off our laptop right now basically so pay for the higher bandwidth business account so we can uh so it's not so blocky and choppy and um, yeah and, and it's and i bumped it up to two two megabits per second which is not the worst yeah. but it's it's fine especially when we're sitting still like this uh, it probably looks just fine but you have three bells we do have three bells oh don't tempt us we might have four bells uh, yeah uh, no no you can't convince us that way no. we were thinking about that thinking about those bells the other day four-way betting system yeah no, no and, there might, not and there might be something coming up with those bells in the future oh, yeah some upgrade to the bells we can't say anything now because it's it's a long-term project yeah. but uh we'll see um so we're gonna sign off yeah. and uh i think we'll do this kind of thing uh next year yeah. and refine our system yeah. yeah so uh we will uh see you online next friday for um doom what was it called the doom slayer, doom slayer edition the premiere for the jaguar That'll be our next show on Friday. So definitely tune in for that. It'll be a very big show. It'll be very exciting. Very exciting. So we're going to sign off and thanks for tuning in and we'll see you very, very soon. And look at the social media for us posting uh, photos and stuff from, from PRG. Somebody just took our photo. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> love it. Okay. So we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.